Okay, it is the start of Mr. Pui's presentation. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for inviting me to the um, presentation today. So today I will talk about uh, the use of English Copra in, in the, in the English, uh, English classroom. Uh, so my presentation will be uh, divided in three parts. The first one I will talk about what is Copra so that people can understand um, the, de the definition of Copra. And I also present some course based study. However, this is focused on uh, the use of Copra um, in the classroom. I thought I'd move on to present some practical course-based activities that the teachers can make use of them in, in their own classroom, okay? Uh, what is Corpus? So basically, first of all, I want to present some dictionary definitions. So um, according to us, but learn a dictionary, Corpus is a collection of written or spoken text. Um, and then Corpus um, can be defined as a language database of a collection of written or spoken materials stored on a computer and use to find out how language is used. Um, however, according to Dash and Rumozy 2018, Corpus can be defined as a um, statistically sample language database for the purpose of investigation, description, application, and analysis relevant to all branches of linguistics. So basically, when we think about Corpus, we think about a collection of huge numbers of words that we can use to analyze the patterns. And then from that, we can design the teaching materials or do some research on, on covers. Um, and also on the market right now, we have some really available copra. Um, so for researchers and for teachers, we can use um, these copra to, um, to research and to, uh, to teach in a classroom. Uh, we have brown covers, and that covers has around 1 million words. We also have the uh, covers of contemporary American English. So that covers um, has around 560 million words. So that's a huge amount of, of words. Um, and we also have the British National Covers, uh, BNC. So this covers has around 1 million uh, words. So basically, for example, if you want to uh, analyze the linguistic of patterns in American English, then we might want to use the COCA. Or if you want to analyze the linguistic of patterns in um, British English, then you may want to use the British National Corpus. So you may ask yourself a question, what does a corpus tell us? Many things. Uh, first of all, a uh, corpus can tell us the frequency information. It means that how frequently a word is used in a particular genre. Uh, Corpus can tell us the context. Um, usually when you use Corpus, you can see uh, the context in which um, or what it used. And from the context, you can try to find out more information about um, the, the word. Also, because usually um, a word can uh, call a girl together. I mean, one word can collocate with other words. So that could be the collocations. So Corpus, can also tell us um, the co-occurrence information. And plus each, a corpus can tell us, you know, whether a word is uh, commonly used as a noun or a verb and many more. Okay, so for example, let's say you want to find out the information about the response rate in COCA. So when you search um, response rate in COCA, you may find something like that. Like the word responsibility occurred uh, 64,000 times in COCA. And also, if you look for the concurrent lines, you also see uh, the context in which um, the word responsibility is used. You also can find out the color case. Uh, for example, let's say you may know um, the noun that usually goes with responsibility or the adjective that usually goes with responsibility or the verb. So basically, a corpus can tell you many uh, pieces of information about a word. Also, you can find out the general information. For example, if you look at the chart here, you can see uh, responsibility is uh, properly uh, used in academic language, okay? So if you look at the, the chart here, you can see um, responsibility is used uh, very commonly in academic language. 
Another type of corpus is um, learner corpus. So learner corpus um, can be defined as uh, electronic collections of language data produced by L2 learners, the second or foreign language learners. Um, why is necessary for us to make use of the learner corpora? Because if you can collect uh, enough data from the students, so you can examine how students use a particular linguistic feature differently from the native speakers. So it means that you can compare the use of a linguistic feature between the learner corpus and the native corpus. So by doing so, you can find out where the learners can make a mistake. Um, in some cases, you also use the learner corpus to examine common errors of in, a, in a learner corpus. For example, you can like collecting um, 100 or 200 certain essays and you have, you know, and you build a learning corpus. And from that corpus, you can design a teaching material which is uh, suitable to help the learners um, to uh, improve their, their English. Um, you also examine um, the linguistic development. So in recent years, many researchers, they tend to use a uh, learner corpus to examine how learners will develop, let's say, lexical diversity or syntactic complexity or lexical simplification based on the use of learner corpus. So if you are interested, you, call, you may want to use the learner corpus to examine uh, how the students actually use um, their language. Okay, so in this session, I will present some course based studies so that you can see how researchers are really uh, moving on to use uh, corpus, you know, in, in the classroom. Um, the first, okay, the first study was conducted by Hirsch and Liao 2008. So the two researchers, they conducted a case study of corpus in form online academic writing for AFL writer students. Uh, in order to do so, first of all, they combine the corpus data. Okay, so they first collected 50 research abstracts published in well known applied linguistic journals. So that could be course one. So these abstracts were written by experienced writers. And then they um, collected 50 local conference abstracts. And these abstracts were written by novice writers. So basically, um, they have two corpora. The first one was developed by experienced writers, and the second one was developed by Noah's writers. Uh, for a second step, they devised a coding mood based scheme to analyze the structure of the abstracts. Um, so they follow that, that five, there are six elements in the abstract. They have background, the gap, the purpose, the method, result, and collusion. Um, after that, they will compare differences in the abstract structure between the two corpora. So basically, they want to see how differently the experienced writers write the abstract from the novice writers. Moving on to step number four. Moving on to step number four, so they use um, you know, some kind of the computational analysis to uh, extract the common language functions you know, from the two um, proper. Uh, so, so some, uh, Phrases, for example, the goal, the aim of the study is the article reports on the findings of or the result show review suggested that. So those are the, the phrases, okay, that the researchers uh, were able to extract from the from the covers. And step number five, they use the two cup, uh, cover to teach graduate students to write the research abstracts, okay. So the result was very uh, promising. So it increased the student awareness of the language functions and structure of the research abstracts and help the student realize the differences between experience and knowledge writer. So basically the researchers want to incorporate the two couple in a classroom so that the student can realize the linguistic uh, patterns uh, used to write the research abstracts. Uh, for a second study, uh, this study was conducted by Otero May 2014, and uh, this study examined the 
the model maps. So the purpose of the study is to compare the frequency, the meaning, and the co-occurrences of model maps in British national corpus, spoken, and those in learning English green light of German textbook in the EFL classroom. So basically, the researchers wanted uh, to see how model maps are presented differently in real life English and in the textbook. Um, the methodology is very simple. So first of all, the researcher extracted on the model maps in BNC spoken, so the 10 million words, and all model maps in the green light in the, in the, in the textbook. And then just count. So the researcher counted the frequency of model maps presented in BNC and in green light. And step number three, the researcher examined the different meanings of model maps in BNC and in green light. Okay, and finally, the researchers also examined the co occurrences of monobars in BNC and in green light. And the results. So, first of all, one we'll talk about the frequency of monobars between BNC and green light. We can see there's a huge um, difference you know, in terms of frequency. If you look at the will, the monobars are uh, will, wooden, can, and must, you can see. There are so many differences in terms of fluency. It means that the model bus presented in the textbook are very differently from the model bus presented in real life English. The researchers also found out that in terms of meanings, there are also so many differences in terms of meaning between um, BNC and between a textbook. If you look at for example, if you look at the um, the permission here. So in uh, BNC, in the English of native corpus, uh, can, could, may, and might can be used to to give permission. However, in the textbook, only can and may are used to give permission. So there's a there's a difference here. So based on the results. Okay, so you can have some biological suggestions. So first of all, maybe based on the um, analysis of the corpus, we may want to change the order in which the model was presented in the textbook. Or you may want to include other meanings of model was in BNC as well. And finally, you may want to teach the model was as a group to help students distinguish their meanings. Uh, in recent years, we also have many uh, course based studies uh, which have a strong biological uh, suggestion, for example. Okay, let's see. Okay, so for example, Bible and Ruben, uh, they examine how fluency information found in the corpus can inform the teaching of grammar. Um, we also have ties uh, to 2014. So this study focused on um, collocations, like how collocations presented in the textbook are different from collocations presented in BNC. Uh, we also have uh, Zoe Demir, 2014, and she also um, examined how to use corpus uh, data uh, to teach collocations for medical students. Um, we also have Dong and Lu, so they try to, uh, to see how um, they try to investigate uh, the effectiveness of corpus based on strong analysis activities to help the student to write engineering uh, research article introductions. So basically, more and more studies um, are course based, and these studies are really uh, show how the, the way we teach English may be changed based on the analysis of opera. Okay. Let's move on to um, the practical course by activities. Okay, so activity number one. So may, you may want to ask the learner to uh, compare words together. Okay, for example, you may have uh, students to think of three pairs of pseudonyms. Okay, let's say evaluate and assess, important and critical, or artist and stimulate. Okay. After that, you may have students discuss in groups 
the differences between the pairs. And Harrison used compare function in Coca to find common color case with each word. And then Harrison with examples and work out the dissimilarities between the pairs. Okay, so I want to uh, show you um, how, 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 how you can do that. Okay, let me share uh, the screen. Share is here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so here um, I'm at the um, Coca interface. Okay. So let's say you have, if you look at here, you can see list and chart, a word and browse, and then you have color case and compare. Okay. So let's say if I want to, if I want to compare two words, I will choose compare. Okay. And let's say I want to compare the differences between important and critical. Okay. So I will type, I will type important and critical in, uh, in the box. Okay. So here, you may want to see the word collocate. So it means that um, you want to find out which word will collocate with important and which word will collocate with critical. Okay. So, and then if you look at on the left, it means that one word before the, the third word. And then if you get on the right, that would means that one word after the word. Okay. So I know that important is an adjective. So I may want to say, okay, so I want to find the now collocate. That could be for something like important job or important responsibility. So in that case, I will choose one word on the right. Okay, so that you look on compares. Okay, here we go. So when you compare here, you can see Coca will give you uh, the frequency information Okay, and the collocation between the two words. So you can see here, important main, important course, important papers, important single, important new. However, critical, if you look at critical, you see a uh, critical thinking, critical acclaim, critical consciousness. So based on the frequency information, and then you can teach the learners how these words are different in the way they are used in real life, okay? So that could be the first activity that I uh, introduced to you. Um, now let's get back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so your screen is here, okay. Now beside um, this activity, we can have the, um, the second activity that could be learn about color case. Okay, so you may want the learner to, to see our powers, our you know, how is collocate on uh, together? Or maybe, I may, may say collocations. Okay, so maybe you can ask the learner to uh, think of finals they have learned recently, very simple. So may, you may have like, oh, responsibility, discovery, confidence, hope, happiness, whatsoever. You, see, you ask the learner to think of finals, okay? And then you may want to ask the learner to think of, okay, so what are some common uh, words that that go together with, with the nails. So you may know that responsibility, discovery, confidence, hope, and happiness, they are all nails. So when they want to do the color case, so maybe that could be verb color case or adjective um, color case. And then you move on to ask the learner to search the color case using the color case function in Coca. And then you may have the student find common color case and less common case of these now and share them with the friends, okay? Now let's get back to the Coca interface. I will show you how you can do that. Okay. Okay. So in order to find color case, you have many ways to do that. For example, you can look on the word here. If you look on the word function here and you may want to find color case of the responsibility. You click on the word and you search uh, responsibility and then you hit uh, see detail info for the word. Okay. So Coca will tell you 
how responsibility uh, collocates with other words. For example, if you look at the colour you can see, okay, so the verb that you should go with responsibility would be take responsibility, accept responsibility, assume responsibility, or claim or bear or share for take or ensure. So those are the common um, verbs that you should go together with responsibility, okay? And also you take an adjective, oh, you can say personal, social, full, physical, moral, individual, primary or corporate, corporate. So those are the adjectives that usually go with uh, responsibility, okay? So you can do that to find a color case, or you also want to hear they have the, uh, they have the word color case here. So you can click on color case, and then remember for color case, you have um, you know, the bar on the left and the bar on the right. So if I want to find the word that collocate with responsibility before responsibility, I would on one. If I want to find two words that are before responsibility, I will click on number two, okay? Now, if I want to find one word after responsibility, I will click on number one, okay? If I want to find two words after responsibility, I will click on number, uh, number two. So it, it depends, it depends on the way that you want to see how responsibility collocates with other words, okay? So let me see, okay, let me choose one. And one more thing I want to show you is that close K here, if you look on the, this one, and then they will show you now color case or verb color case or adjective color case or F of color case. So it depends on you, okay? It depends whether you want to find now color case with responsibility or whether you want to find adjective color case with responsibility, okay? So I will, oh, oh, okay, okay, yes. Okay, so, okay, let's go back to uh, the, the uh, one last activity, okay? Um, um, okay. So the last activity um, is uh, how to teach idioms, okay? You can use how to teach idiom, it is very interesting. Let's say in this activity, I, um, I will show you how to teach uh, idioms. So in this case, I use a rain um, as a sample. Okay, so I have some um, idioms for example, come rain, take a rain check, or service for rainy day. Okay, so I have some um, idioms. And then I will ask the learner to fill up blanks. Okay, so the learner may not know the idioms and she will try the best to fill up blanks. Okay, and then I will have a learner one groups and to fill up blanks. And after that, I have learner to guess the meanings of the idioms. Okay. And now this interesting part is I will ask learner to search the idioms in Polka. It's very important because the learners will read examples and from example, they will understand the meaning of the idioms, okay? But because idioms sometimes there will be the difference uh, between American English and British English, I can ask learner to compare whether the idiom is commonly used in American English or in British English. Okay, and also you can see how idioms are used in fiction, talks or news, okay. For example, some idioms are properly used in fiction, but all the idioms are properly used on TV. So you can show, you know, these uh, piece of uh, information to, to, the, to the students and it will help them to learn the idioms, okay. So thank you so much for your attention. This is also the end of my presentation today. Please unmute yourself. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that. Uh, due to thank you for so much, uh, our speaker, uh, Mr. Guifan, for your presentation. Due to the limited time, we cannot include all of the questions in the Q and A session. But uh, Mr. Kui, can you input your email address in the chat box so that everyone can send you some some questions uh, later? Okay. You can drop your your email in the comment section uh, in the in the chat box. Uh, and if you have, uh, if, if our audience, uh, we have any questions, please uh, yes, just send, send them over in email.
Okay, so on behalf of uh, Vietnam, uh, TESOL Con International Convention 2020, we wish you all the best and uh, with a productive day ahead and the meaningful rest of a virtual convention. Thank you and bye-bye. Okay, so that's- Thank you, thank you so much.